It's a sad day for makers of PCB. JLC PCB used to offer a free panelizing service if your overall size of your board was less than 10 by 10. They still charge you just the two dollars. So panelizing is where you duplicate the boards out like this. Uh, this type of panelizing is called V-score, where they make a V-score on the PCB. That kind of snaps apart like that. But uh, since earlier on this week, they now charge for that service. That panelizing service was a little bit limited in some ways anyways. Uh, the minimum size had to be 70 millimeters in both directions. So if you had a 50 millimeter board, you wouldn't be able to panelize that because it would be over the 100 limit, but it would be under the 70 limit. And uh, you also could only duplicate one single board. So for the power blockers, I wasn't even fully sure if they were going to work or fit, but I ordered 200 of them. So it would be nice to be able to try out a couple of different boards, see does it work, and then maybe make a larger order. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do manual panelization. So it's going to use a different type of panelization. It's a tab and mouse bite method. So these still break apart, okay? You'll probably need to tidy them up a little bit afterwards. But uh, the advantage of this is that you can add different types of boards to the same thing. And also in this video, I'm going to show you how to avoid this, where the mouse bites are not there, so you can't really break it apart. So first off, we're going to need Gerber tools by This Is Not Rocket Science. So if you just go to the releases page, you can download the zip. So this is for Windows only. I believe you can use command line versions of it on Linux and Mac, but I won't be covering that in this video. So when the zip is downloaded, just extract it. You don't need to install this or anything. So just go into the folder and the tool we're interested in is Panelizer. So just open that folder and then open Gerber Panelizer.exe. So once that's launched, go to File, click New, and this will create a new project. So you want to go to Panel Properties and set the size of your panel. So for JLC PCB, you'd want 100 by 100 if you want to get their special offer. And then you click OK. Next, you want to take your Gerber zip file. So this would be the same zip file that if you were ordering these individually that you'd upload to Oshpark or JLC PCB. And you want to just drag it into the grid and you'll see it appear there. So drag in one of each of the designs you want. And then you want to place it on the grid. So you can place the first one right up against the two edges. And then for your next one, you want to place it again up against the edges and maybe about two squares apart. So each one of these squares is a millimeter and uh, two is a pretty good distance because it gives you a nice, decent tab size. If you leave it too far apart, the tabs will be too small and uh, JLC recommend that they should be at least three millimeters wide for strength. As you can see here, I've got two different Gerbers on my project, but I still have a lot of empty space. So if I had another design that uh, would fit in here, I could add it. There's no problem with adding more than that. But what I want to do instead is actually duplicate the smaller one to fill up more of the space. So there's a couple of different ways you can actually do it. You can drag in the zip file again. You can click up here to duplicate an instance. Um, but I find the best way is to actually just right click where you want to place it, add instance, and then you'll get a list of the ones that you've already dragged in. So you just want to click on that one. The reason I find that works better is because it places it where you want it to be. Sometimes if you duplicate it up here, it ends up off the screen somewhere and it makes it just more awkward. So this is just a much easier way of doing it. It's also possible to rotate the instances if that's something you'd prefer to do. Uh, you can use the options here on the side. 
and with rotating it it's probably possible that I'll get two in up here now yeah so I would have only gotten one if I did it the normal way but now I'm after fitting in two so I'm making maximum advantage of the space I have available to me when you're happy with the layout of your Gerbers it's now time to add the tabs so to do that you just right click and add break tab so you can then place it wherever you want so if there's something specific here you don't want to get in the way of you can move it along uh, but just place it in between the two and uh, as mentioned it's better to have them at least three millimeters wide that's what JLC recommended to me anyways the boards will change color based on how many tabs that you have on each one so it kind of lets you know that yeah that's a solid connection so if I just add one break tab to this guy and don't connect it to the rest of it it will kinda of show up as red as in that's not a good connection between them so you just keep adding the break tabs between all of them and I've definitely done it where it's still yellow and that's fine um, but yeah you want to add what's reasonable but one in between each of them should be okay unless it's quite a large board so this is actually a pretty good example this is probably too big of a gap so I could try center it a bit more and it's a bit better but I'm probably better off just moving it in one and now I've got a larger tab again one thing I do recommend is you can save these as a project and I would recommend doing that quite often because it does have a habit of crashing so for something simple like this it would be quick to replace it but if you're doing something a bit more intricate or whatever definitely be saving it regularly when you're happy with your final layout you can just click file and export merged Gerbers so this will prompt you to save it in a folder so if you just put it on your desktop the files will be loose on your desktop so make yourself a new folder and rename it and then click OK on that one and it will generate your Gerbers for you a pretty nice feature is it actually generates two images of what your Gerber files now look like and uh, it actually opens this automatically for me I don't know if that's the case with all of them but uh, you can see an image of the front and all the boards and then one of the back as well next you want to open the folder that you just created so for me it's merged Gerbers and we want to get this into a state that we can upload it to JLC or Oshpark so at the moment you can see that they're all individually listed out here what we need to do is add them to a folder and zip them up so this unzipped folder actually comes as part of the tool generation so you can just move it into there and then right click send to compressed zip folder and that's a Gerber file that you can upload to JLC or Oshpark. At this point it's probably worth naming this something meaningful to you um, just because that that zip unzipped that zip will continue on to the to the board manufacturers as well so when they're referring to this board back to you if there's any queries they'll be calling it unzipped.zip which doesn't really make a lot of sense so give it a meaningful name but keep the .zip file ending. It's also really important to take all the files other than the .png files and put them into the folder that you're gonna zip up. There's even one that's called .txt, which is actually a drill file as well, even though it doesn't have the DRL ending. So for the board I showed without the mouse bytes, I think it's possible I didn't zip up that file, but I'm not 100% sure so you can now take that file that you just created and upload it to your favorite PCB manufacturer so I can upload it here to Oshpark it's uploading my design 
it will probably take a little bit longer to process than other boards at least this one definitely did for me but you can see here that their Gerber previewer looks pretty good there's filled in parts here I haven't ordered one of these from Oshpark but we'll see with the JLC one it's the same but the finished product doesn't have them so I think that's just a previewer thing it might be worth mentioning in in your order just can you make sure that there's no filled parts between the boards but uh, another thing to note here is that your project contained two drill files we've merged them so that's uh, that's what I was talking about with the combined dot text earlier on for JLC it's the same thing you can just drag your zip file in here and it'll upload and process so again on the quick preview here you can see it looks generally okay but uh, it's worth going to the actual Gerber viewer because you can't see the mouse bite drill holes in you can't see the mouse bite drill holes in the preview on the previous page but you can see them here so it's definitely worth checking that they are there and that everything's okay with your Gerber file so if you go back here you can just order this as normal they do have a part here for different design um, I I don't know why you would say that you have more than one design I, I'm not sure um, what advantage that gives you I've definitely ordered boards without mentioning that I have different designs so the problem with saying you have different designs is that it increases the price and they're not really doing anything for you like as in it's a single Gerber file that you're asking them to make so I'm not sure as mentioned I've definitely gotten away with just saying one design so not sure but if you look at their example it does mention that like this is two different designs because there's a B here and four A's so I'm not sure if you'll have problems I haven't so far I think it's definitely worth leaving a remark here to say to check that there's drill holes on each of the tabs because on our recent order I actually forgot that TXT file again and I had this note in it and they came back to me and said that there isn't so definitely worth leaving that remark in there they're actually pretty good for checking these stuff that's it for this video JLC PCBs free panelizing may have stopped but BLC PCD has your back hopefully you find this video interesting I'm no expert on PCBs whatsoever but this method has worked for me so I thought I'd share it with people because I haven't seen a lot of people talking about it and uh, if you have any questions please let me know in the comments below and thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time